Hey everybody, it's Grant, and today we are answering that age-old question. The franchise, startup business, which one should you do? Let's go. As you've seen in previous videos, I actually will list them all in the description. I have talked about how to find the right business for you, what to do with the right location, should I do a startup, should I do a franchise? There are so many videos that I've done in this series that I think are gonna be very helpful. I'm listing them all in the description below. You don't need any of them to actually get the point of this one. This is just a quick overview of what should we get into. Do I want a franchise or do I want a business that I wanna start this thing from absolute scratch and make sure I have a business that I don't actually have to have anybody watching me or do anything. We're gonna get into this today. Let's start with the positives of actually being in a franchise. So the number one thing about a franchise that makes it so very nice is that you don't really have to come up with much. You do need to be creative on how you're going to market or this, but the main thing about a franchise is you are buying a book of someone's successful experience that they have made money at, they have got the design ready, they've got the products, the recipes, the services, the, the chemical balance to do this type of service to clean it the best you've ever seen. They have this already ready put a bow on it, slide it to you for the one-time price of $39,995. Well, it's typically gonna come with a fee, but that's the uh, part, we'll get into that in the negatives. But my point behind this, I couldn't resist, my point behind this is they're gonna actually have the entire product, the entire process, uh, what you need to buy, how you need to do it, where you need to get your equipment from, they're just gonna be everything ready to go in a very nice step-by-step -step guide that's just gonna help you get in the business that much faster. Some other benefits to having a franchise over a startup business. You're gonna actually have a company that is called corporate, whatever you're gonna be doing, and they are gonna be watching your CSI. They're gonna be making sure your customer satisfaction is solid. They're gonna make sure that if you're in a, in a food business, they're gonna send people to make sure that it's clean and properly represents the brand. For most franchises, you also have to send them your financials to make sure you're being profitable. It doesn't look good on a franchise when you open and have to close because it just didn't work out for you. You, you weren't making enough money or you weren't running it properly. So they're gonna be there for you pretty much every step of the way because your success determines their success. And the last benefit I'd like to touch on on this specific video is if things start going horribly wrong and you picked the right franchise, they most likely will be there for you. They will try to send you some staff or do something to help you along the way because closing a store for a franchise is very, very unappealing for the brand. And I will tell you, any CEO of any franchise really doesn't want that. So by actually getting you to do this and making it a successful concept, you become this war story to go and tell other people so they'll also join that brand. So now let's go into the negatives of actually owning a franchise or buying into one. First thing, that beautiful package I told you earlier that I pushed towards you comes with a price. You're gonna pay anywhere from 5,000 for a very inexpensive franchise that somebody's kind of starting out with all the way up to probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. But a typical franchise fee is gonna be in between $20,000 and $50,000. Understand, you're buying their recipes, their, their chemical compound breakdowns, their design, their procurement list to figure out what kind of equipment you need, what kind of blenders you need, what kind of uh, containers you need for your chemicals. They're gonna help you along the way with absolutely everything, from the thing that you're gonna scoop something with to the thing that you're gonna put it into and hold or the thing that's gonna go up on the building called the sign. They're there for you. Also in this fight, they've, they've done the designs, which cost a lot of money to get a good designer. They've got everything thought of, ready to go, and a proven concept. So you do have to pay for it, but a lot of people prefer that over actually having to think that much for themselves. Another major issue with a franchise is that every single month, you will have to pay franchise fees. They don't just sell you that package one time and call it quits. They will charge you in between four to eight percent on average, about six, uh, and that is not really that expensive, but it doesn't help because it goes off of gross sales. It's kind of like if you're gonna actually have a property manager, they don't take the six percent of the profit or 10 percent of the profit, they take it off of the gross. So understand you will be paying them this fee. If you do sixty thousand dollars in sales and you're gonna have to pay six percent of that, you are gonna pay thirty six hundred bucks to your franchisor, right? So understand by being a franchisee, you have a fee to do and then your rent is gonna be more than that. So right there, you're looking at about $10,000 in bills 
uh, right off the bat being a franchisee versus a startup. So something to think about. Uh, are you able, will you pay that percent for the entire time you were underneath their company? And, uh, you know, is that worth it to you? Another thing too that, you know, some people don't like, but it's pretty good to have your franchise will hold you accountable. If you're not cleaning things right or you're not doing things right, there are things in your agreement that they can hold you up to. Uh, being held accountable is a good thing. Some people don't like it. They wanna blame other people when things are going bad, but at the same time, let's just be honest. We need to have that sometimes. When we're told we're not coming into work on time, it's good and it kinda gives us a nice kick in the pants. That franchisee, even though this is technically a negative, I kinda find a positive in it that they are going to be checking you and making sure that you are providing the standards that they would like upheld. So now let's get into startup benefits. Startup benefits are, you're gonna have to come up with the own concept, but it's not gonna cost you anything. You're gonna be coming up with all of this stuff on your own, but at the same time, you've got free reign to do any and all of that yourself. If you're creative and you're gonna design the space or got a friend that can design the space, hey, go for it. You can actually go and try to find that right idea, but the best part about being a startup is you have so much freedom to figure out what concept that you wanna do, what design you wanna go with, how you want your sign to look, and all of these beautiful things that you will have so much fun creating. Another benefit, you don't have to pay them a fee for their stuff. You also don't have to pay a monthly percent of your sales. You are now your own concept. You've got everything together for yourself. You do not have to pay anyone else besides yourself, your landlord, and then of course your vendors and your employees, don't forget them. So as far as that, that is a very nice feeling, but once again, if the concept fails, maybe we could have went with that other one. I don't know. That's what this video is about, and it's about you making that decision for yourself. Let's get into the negatives. The negatives of doing a startup on a business or service or whatever, a product, is that it's all on you. You know, if the sign doesn't look right and it's kind of funky, it's on you. If the build-out space didn't go right and the plugs aren't in the right wall, it's on you in the event that you just don't mark it right because you got tired or you got busy or you had some personal problems. No one else is going to be there to help you. There's a lot of negatives to not having a partner there to kind of guide you along the way. It all rides on your shoulders. It's also going to be very, very uh, intense thinking. You're going to have to make sure that you're coming up with these recipes and spending so much time just cook it in your kitchen or you're going to have to be blending this or finding this product that's able to be sold and sold for the right profit, right? And you're going to be affordable enough to make, right? You got to you got to teach and train and figure out the training program. There's a lot that goes into a startup. You might not think that, but there is. To sum up this video, I would say if you are a wildly imaginative person and you are driven beyond all measure, try the startup. I applaud you not having to pay that percentage. It does suck. I do with my company. It's not that fun. But if you are not this wildly driven, very, very imaginative uh, person that is willing to just grow and figure out recipes and when things go wrong, you just can't wait to fix the problems, I would say it is a very safe bet for you to do the franchise. When you're doing the startup and let's say that halfway through the process you've spent half of your life savings and you no longer want to do this anymore because you can't figure out how to get over this hump, it's all on you. And you probably already signed a lease at this part. So now you've got to figure out how to get out of that lease with the landlord, but commercial leases, you're tied to them and they are going to get paid regardless of your business opening. So be very careful when becoming a business owner. There's a lot of things that can go wrong and it's a very tough business. So my personal opinion is if you are not this person, if you are not Literally, Superman or woman, I would say, let's get into a franchisee. Let's figure out uh, how that franchise is going to help you. Let's make sure that it's the perfect one for you, one that's affordable. And also, I've done a ton of videos on this, and I think it kind of really shed some light on this. So, uh, link in the description below with all of the franchisee videos that I've done up to this point. I hope that you found some value in this video. I hope. You have a fantastic afternoon, and please remember, I 100% believe in you, whether you do a franchise or a startup, just be prepared that they are both very hard. The startup is even harder. I 100% hope you have a fantastic afternoon, and I will see you on the next one.